Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBook Studio. This week, we're going to be looking at... Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro, <laughs> the new features uh, we've been looking at over the past few weeks. And we're going to continue that vein with a new feature of improved... Compound clips. Improved compound clips is right. Yeah, we've kind of been moving through the editorial workflow, looking at improvements in importing and working with media and editing. And now audio. we're talking about, yeah, audio, a lot of neat features. So here's the kind of the setup. Um, I've created a little show open, and we can even look at it without even playing it, get a good sense of what it's like. I have clip skimming enabled, so we can see there's a title. We can see we have a green screen clip and a background clip and some music. So let me just play this. Okay, so just a, a quick little piece, and Almost by the way, these titles... Interstitial, like. Yeah, yeah, and it's just a little show open, basically. It could be an interstitial, sure. Yeah. And um, it's built with uh, text uh, templates out of Final Cut, you know, kind of built-in pieces. I didn't render anything. I'm just full 1080 with compositing, just playing in real time, which is one thing I love about Final Cut, is you just build and play. On a shiny new Retina MacBook. Well, but you can... Yeah. I did this on my yeah. previous one. You can just build and play. I don't yeah. render until I export. Yeah. But the, here's the setup. I want to use this thing repeatedly, okay? It's a show open, and I'm doing a regular weekly, monthly show, whatever, and I want to be able to use it in multiple projects. So uh, I'm going to make a compound clip out of it. And you could do this before, make a compound clip, but compound clips have changed. So what I'm going to do is select all, Command-A to select all. I'm going to go to the File menu and choose to make a new compound clip or Option okay. G. Okay. Now before, when you selected this command, it just made the compound clip, but now you will get a dialog box. You're asked which, to name it and save it somewhere. Yeah, like, wait a minute, what's this about? So I'm going to name it, I'll just call it uh, Napa Show, and I'm going to save it to my compound event. And so wait a minute, save it to an event? What? Right? Are you, that you should be like, that's your cue. What? <laughs> why am I uh, saving it to an event? Why are we saving it to an event? Right. I, I, I'm doing this in the timeline. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so it's actually, wait, wait. It's going to be making a source clip out of it. Exactly. It's oh. going to be making a parent clip okay. or a source clip out of it. So now, whenever you make a compound clip, it creates a copy of it in the can uh, we, Can we call in that an, an, like an instance? You could call it a lot of things. You could call it instance or uh, a Final Cut calls it a parent. I don't really like to call it a parent because there's not exactly a parent-child right. relationship. But oh, right, because the child can control the parents. The, yeah, this, the children yeah. can control the parents. Yeah, but actually, weird. now my experience is that that happens all the time, all right. so maybe it's maybe it's appropriate. So I'm going to click OK and check it out. We have a new um, Kanban clip up in the event browser, right. OK? And in the timeline, our clip has now been created. It, it's no change. It's the same it's exact set of clips. clips. It's just been basically nested or formed a compound clip. Now, here's where it gets really, really interesting. I can take this one and copy paste it, or I can take the one in the event browser, does not matter, and put them into multiple projects. Right, they can exist across multiple. Yeah. For the purposes of what we're doing here, I'm going to add the same compound clip to the same project. So, okay. so we have to flip between projects. Right, so sure. I'm going to select it, hit E, Shift Z to fit it to the window, and now we have two copies of this or compound instances. clip. Two instances. Okay, you really sorry, want to call them sorry, instances. No. It's actually right. one instance, but right. multiple copies. Right. Sorry. So we have three <laughs> compound clips, but they're all related to each other. Right. So what that means, it's now kind of a live linked relationship. Sure. Any change to one will change all the rest. Nice. Okay, so um, let's do it. I'll, what I'm going to do is double click the one in the event browser to open it up in its own timeline. So we can tell, we can see right here, I'm in the event, mm -hmm. and there's the compound clip. That's the one I'm manipulating. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to select this show open here where it says Wine News, and I'm going to go to the inspector. And for this particular title effect, I have some ch options here. I'm going to change the color to green, and I'll change these circles to squares. Just something really obvious, right? Sure. So you can really see the difference. And maybe for this lower third, I'll do the same thing so it's consistent. I'll do squares, and I'll do green, okay? So it's a consistent look. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in the timeline history by clicking a little left arrow here. And 
if we go to the event first, up top, we can see there it is, it's all green, right? If right. I say I kind of skim through it. But it should change the first one too. In the timeline, it's first you think it didn't change anything. Because the thumbnail's still blue. Yeah, the thumbnails didn't update. I, I don't frankly know what the deal okay. is with that. But if we skim through it, the project itself, the clips have updated. They have. So every and you only instance, need to change one. Yes, you only change one. So you could have the same um, compound clip in multiple, multiple projects throughout right. uh, Final Cut, and they'll all update which is really powerful, yes. right? So that's number one, is this linked relationship. If I change just this one, it's gonna change it, it will change scene. all the other ones. This is where the child controls the parent. It, yes, okay. yes, so, so any one affects all the others. Now, you don't always want this. No. Sometimes you wanna change one independently, and I just wanna show you two quick two ways, ways to do to that. Do that right? Yeah, so the first is if I take this one and basically break it back apart again, so make it not be a compound clip. And the way to do that is to select it and go under the clip menu and choose break apart clip items. Shift Command G, it's the opposite of uh, actually making the one in the first place. So I choose that, and now we see it's individual components, and anything I do, like let's for instance change this to uh, uh, gray, and now this one is gray, and it hasn't changed the other ones at that's all. That's right. So that's that's one option. Now I'm gonna undo Because it's not those a compound steps. clip anymore, that's why. Right, right, right. So now it still is a compound clip, but if I wanna break its relationship to the other two, I can go up to the clip menu and choose this new command, reference new parent clip. I see, so you're gonna create a child and say, where's my mommy? I'll create one for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm gonna make you a new oh, mommy. I'm gonna make yeah, you a new yeah. mommy, got it. So we're gonna, we're gonna choose that, and look, a new one gets created with the name copy appended to it in the, mm. in the, uh, in the event browser. Now, um, it now has a relationship to this one. Any changes to this will affect but, that one, but it's right. a new relationship independent of the of first, first one. one. So if you know you're gonna to wanna to use this just once, you might just break apart clip items. That's, right. To me, that's the fastest, easiest. Right. You don't need another copy in the event browser, but if you wanna use it multiple times, create a new parent-child relationship. So um, that's it in a nutshell. It's simple. It actually works exactly like multicam clips do. Because a multicam clip, if you use it multiple projects, make a change to one, it changes all of so them. So well, just to clear, for clarity, if I actually took that copy or the, that original, the original instance and put it in another project, completely unrelated to this, any change I made to it will affect any project that it's in. All of them. That's, Everywhere. Yes. And so that's, that's really, yes. really yes. great. So, and it's important to know, because sometimes you want that to happen, sometimes you don't. Right. So that's ways to handle both situations. So uh, great new Excellent. feature. Excellent. So you can find out about this feature and more in our latest training, uh, Final Cut Pro 10.0.6 in depth. And uh, you can also learn Final Cut from the ground up using our introductory tutorial called Apple Pro Video Series Final Cut Pro, which you'll find at RippleTraining.com. Mark, thanks for showing us compound clips. You bet. All right. And thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.